Well, hello there, everybody. My name is Oing Zero, and welcome to a quick scope of Tales of Zillia. Now, Tales of Zillia is an RPG based around the kind of anime style of RPGs, and it's a somewhat action, somewhat strategic RPG. And most of the Tales of series is played in the same style as this game, in ways of combat and leveling up and things like that, and when I s that sounds like every RPG, the way I just said that, but you'll know what I mean here in just a minute. But the way I actually found out about this game was Tales of Zestiria was released, which is the latest Tales of game, and I'd seen a lot of things about it, and it seemed very interesting to me, and then I found this one at GameStop used for, I think, 20 or $25, when they didn't have Tales of Zestiria and I didn't feel like paying $60 for it, you know, going into the series. I didn't feel like spending a whole lot of money when I never played it before. So I bought this one, because it was very similar, and I'd had a Tales of Zillia 2 poster actually hanging up in my room until the cats decided that that did not need to be hung on the wall anymore, and they tore it down. So, here we are with Tales of Zillia 1. And so far, I absolutely love this game. Pretty much everything about the game. The art style is great, the combat's great, the characters are great. I've heard things about Zestiria's characters not being as good, but I really love the characters in this. And as you see, I've played just shy of 12 hours and 10 minutes, if you look down there in the bottom corner. And... There's a lot to talk about in this game, so I'm just gonna get right in it. As I said, this is an RPG, so you have about six characters in your party, and you can set any of them to be the leader, which puts them out in front, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be in battle. Your first four in your slots are the ones you use in battle, and then the other two still gain experience. But we're gonna put Leia back. Or Leah? I think her name's Leah. I think that's how you say it. You're going to put Leah back in the front, just because... She's our newest party member, so I put her out there. And all of these characters, I have to say, they're all really unique, and they all have their own personalities, and they're very well done. And the voice acting is just amazing. We'll get to all that in just a minute, though. So, when you start the game, you have two main characters that are in the game. Like, you follow one of them at all times. And the one I chose to follow was Mila, so in my game, she is the main character. The other one you can pick as is Jude, because at certain times in the story, they will separate. And when they do separate, like my game obviously follows what happens to Mila while they're separated. And the other one, they'll follow what happens to Jude, and the games start out just a little bit differently. And... Like <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're only separated for like five minutes and then they're back together, but apparently important things happen and so it, it Causes a purpose and I'm sure somewhere near the end of the game it will actually do something substantial But we're going to talk about the characters really quickly because I do want to go over them so as I said we'll start with Mila since she's the main character on my game and Mila is the human embodiment of the spirit Maxwell who God. She's basically God. She had yeah, I'm basically playing as God. How cool is that, right? Why don't I have her as the leader? Um, but God is able to control the four great spirits of wind, water, fire, and earth at her side, though something happens in the storyline to where she is not able to use them right now. Uh, I don't really want to give away any spoilers. <laughs> yeah, like, the whole Metroid, like, you start out, like, insanely powerful, something happens, and she doesn't even know how to swing a sword, because literally they guided her that much that they basically swung her sword for her. It, it is, it is incredibly hard once that happens when you're playing as Mila, you're like, oh god, I can't fight anything. But you can swap between any of them in combat, but there's a few points where Jude wasn't there, it was interesting. Also, um... I guess from then we'll go to Jude, who is a basic young adult, uh, mixed into things, kind of over his head. He's a medical student that was helping Mila, and then both of them ended up being wanted by the government's army, who is corrupt, and obviously that's the main enemy of the game. 
Yeah, the more I say it out loud, the story sounds kind of cliched, but it's actually really done well so far, and as I said, I'm 12 hours into the game and I have not had a boring moment of it. Yeah, a lot of the Tales games tend to do that. Um, I'm actually not sure how close to the end of the game I am. It feels like we're building up near the end, but we'll get to that later. This is Alvin, and he's the third party member that's introduced into the game, and he's a mercenary that was... How did he actually get introduced? He saved Jude. Oh, that's right. He was with Jude, and so they were being hunted by the military. Well, no, no, that's what I'm saying. And he grabbed Jude while Mila was jumping on the ship and jumped with him, and they escaped the government, and he's kind of been off and on following them as they go along their journey, being paid by different people, like the followers of Mila paid him to follow her for a while, and then he's come back, and off and on. You know what I mean. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Be our, <laughs> Be our religion. Anyway, <laughs> this is, um... He, he's actually a really interesting character and maybe one of my favorite characters in the game just because I just love him. Contrary to popular belief, he is not a singing chipmunk. Yes, he is not a singing chipmunk, believe it or not. Uh, the fourth character introduced is Elise and she's a young girl that you rescue from basically being shunned from the entire town she was in because she is insanely talented in skill. I won't say skilled, but she's insanely talented in the way of arts, in that she can use all of the attack art. I haven't even been saying how they attack in battle. I'm terrible at this. She can use any attack magic and healing magic, and Mila can use sword. She's like a spell sword. She can use swords that aren't as powerful as like Alvin's great sword, and he basically just uses great sword and I think maybe one or two arts. Um, and then she can use any attack magic. Jude is strictly healing magic and quick and not as powerful attacks. And he uses martial arts and you He's can... your generic fighting. Yeah, he's like your generic fighter character, except he actually has healing ability. Not all of them like do fighting, that. Like fighting game. Yeah, but then you have Rowan, who was introduced after that. And he is sort of a... doesn't do a whole lot of attacking. Oh, not going to introduce Puppet Chie? Oh, yes, Elise has... how do... Okay, Elise has a doll named Tipo, who is voiced by the character... or not character, voiced by the voice actor who does Chie from Persona 4, and it is hilarious. I love this little thing. It ruins Chie for me, but... It is... I, I could be introducing him this way. This is a much more interesting screen to look at. Why was I not doing this the entire time? <laughs> okay, this is Mila, that's Jude, that's Alvin, and this is Elise. Okay, anyway, I love the puppet. I'm, I'm terrible at explaining things, so that's why I do game reviews, apparently. This is Rowan, and he is a butler that, uh... A butler? He, he's a butler that's not a butler. He apparently used to be, like, a secret agent of... And he's very high up in, like, a tactician for he's military war. secret agent? He's apparently a very famous secret agent. He's, he's one of those. He was good at his job, he was good at his job. He, he's one of those. And, um, he's a really cool character, actually. I like him. He uses, like, not very much attack at all, actually, and mainly stays back and either gives, like, a ton of support through magic. Hey, That's ton of support. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You can do it. No. Okay, and then there is Leia. Leah. I always want to call her Leia. Her name is Leah who is a childhood friend of Jude's who attack her attacks are very similar to Leah. Would be Leia. I mean Maybe I'm Leia. To name Leia who spelled that. Are there any spelled like that? Maybe her I can't remember what the heck they call her actually. Is it, be, it Leah it or be, Leia? It would be Leia. I know that much for a fact. Yeah, I don't know. This is her and she attacks a lot like Jude except she's her attacks are not as fast, but they're a bit more powerful, and she doesn't... She uses... Her healing magic is a lot more powerful than Jude's, and she... Does she have attack arts? I don't think she does. I don't know, but her arts are basically martial arts. 
Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? I'm so smart. Anyway, and then she has a lot more powerful healing magic, and that's basically all the characters and how they fight. Uh, she's a really interesting character, but I actually haven't had a whole lot of time to develop her as a character. But I really like all these characters. It's a great cast of characters, and the voice acting is amazing in this game. Like, everybody's voice just fits perfectly, and it's great. And I'm just briefly going to go over this because it's kind of big. This is your level up skill tree. It's basically like any other skill tree. You develop it in certain ways that you want them to excel in, or you can auto level them, to which will auto level them in what it feels like is the best path for them to go based on how their character develops. And as you grow, it will expand. And I do kind of like the spiderweb effect because as you fill up like these six nodes, this one in the middle will unlock. It's an interesting way to do things, and I really. Why? Is that whole thing like the whole bar thing? Like yeah. Whole, like, strain, like say strength, defense, with all the red shape and stuff. Which is oh. Based on their okay. Stats? I guess it does that, but they don't really correlate with each other, so I guess that doesn't really work. But anyway, um, and then you have the arts, which I said are like their attack magic or the attack, you know, abilities that they use and stuff like that, and. Then you have skills, which are bonuses you get in battle, like uh, Wind Guard gives them increased wind protection. Magic Guard, you can guard against magic attacks. Uh, Assault gives you more AC, which I guess I can talk about the battles right now. I want to talk about the bunny ears. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Out of our way. So, as I said, you can kind of... It's tactical in a way that you can tell them, you can give them different ways that they will attack creatures. And then you can link with somebody, like right now I'm playing as Leia and I'm linked with Mila. And what is that one attack? Hold on. Which attack was it that they link with? Come here. Okay, I think it was this one? Yep, and then you can use a link attack like that. And it's an extra power art. Jesus Christ, that is really loud in my headphones. I can't even hear myself talk. No one can stop me. No this is one funny. can stop me. No. I stand corrected. <laughs> I love those things. Um like depending on who does the final blow and who's partnered with who and who's on the battlefield, you'll get different little after battle scenes like this, which are really funny. And there's probably like two or three for each character, and it varies for who they're linked with. Um, sometimes it'll just be themselves. That bag over there is jumping. Oh, it is a... It's a monster. I thought it was a bag, like I just picked up. Anyway. <laughs> um... I'll go a little bit more in-depth into the combat in just a little bit, and I'll jump back to an earlier point where I was at a boss fight, because the boss fights... They're very similar, but I want to go over one, just so you can kind of see what they're like. Anyway. See, you can see why I thought that was a bag from far away. It looks like a bag. Anyway, so that's basically the gist of the combat. It gets a little bit more interesting as you link with different characters. They have different abilities they give you as you're linked with them, and different attacks link with their different attacks, giving you different special attacks. It's very interesting, but it would go. It would take forever to really go into depth of how everything actually works in the linking skills and these you can this is what I was talking about how you can tell what they want to do in battle when you're not controlling them like HP levels most of them are on tough it out which like keep your distance when HP drops below 25 attack without concern uh, keep your distance at 50 keep your distance at 75 so 25 I normally have them is where they keep their distance and then this is like what he focuses on canceling out spirit arts he's really good at that like if they have a spirit art there um like there'll be a, like one going to use the spirit art and he'll go and attack them or throw an art at them that knocks them off so they're not using as many Mila attacks nearby enemies she tries to target the low HP enemies first since her attacks aren't as powerful um 
and then Alvin goes after the strong enemies first. Le uh, just kind of, you know, w hits as many targets. Okay, sorry about that. My computer decided, hey, let's randomly restart. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it cut off. I know I was talking about something in this, but basically what I was going to say was I haven't actually touched most of this sometime most of the time. Oh, jeez, I'm reading everything. It's messing up what I'm saying. I haven't actually touched the strategy at all because it seems to be very fit for how the characters are built around. So, but, I mean, you can change it if you want to. It's totally up to you. Now, uh, the event list basically, you know, quest line. Not too much to go into than that. Then there's equipment. And you have different weapons that you can get. Most of the weapons are streamlined of power until, like, the Wind Striker has a wind element. And I didn't really take that into consideration when I bought it. Especially, like, with the turbulent the harpy edge the air rod the sylph wings and the stormbringer they all have the air element well i didn't consider to save some of the earlier weapons that didn't for when i fight monsters that have air as their main defense so it gets a little bit tough at times but it's it's nothing too unbearable which i do like that that it just it's not like oh you're gonna die so it's just kind of like it takes longer to kill them basically or you just use more arts whatever and down here, as you can see, like, if you look at the item kind of next to the portrait near the bottom, you see, like, little people's icons that's telling you who can use that. Like, the accessory, anybody can use any accessory, and accessories are pretty self-explanatory. They give a uh, special bonus. Some of them also have a bonus and defense, but there's not too much to go into that. Now, here is the second page of equipments, which is accessories that do like cosmetic ch changes and that's it now all of my characters you might have noticed earlier all have bunny ears it's because i got the bunny ears and once you get something you can put it on every single character and they all stack like you don't have like oh i have one set of bunny ears who do i want it on no like half of them all of them have bunny ears some of them have uh like jude and leia and Alvin have the dog tail. The rest of them have like a sheath dagger. Like hers is on her arm. Hers is on her leg. Alvin's on his arm. And all these do go into cutscenes also. And oh she also has a sheath dagger. And so does Jude actually. And then one thing I will say is there is DLC to this game. And 90% of your DLC is costumes. And there's a lot of different styles of costumes. Some of them are like, you know, like J-pop idols, uh, like beachwear. Um, there's there's a few other like themes you could go off of. But you can buy each costume individually. I think they're about two dollars for each character. So let's see if I had six characters, there might be three dollars because. I spent almost $18 to buy an outfit for each character, and I switch between them. Like, right now, these are all their stock outfits. But, if you look at this, I, there's a maid and butler outfit for each character, and I'll just equip them really quick and then show you. There's maid and butler outfits for every single individual character. And, of course, when I saw that, I bought it, because it's just awesome. And then obviously they can have like a maid headdress or frilled hat or flared maid headdress. But I actually am not using the maid outfits right now. Where did your sheath dagger? There it is. So they each have their own hairstyle that it comes with. Although with Leia, I like her headdress thing she has, so I keep her normal hairstyle. Alvin, I actually always use his butler hairstyle because it braids his ponytail, which I think looks a lot cooler than just the straight line it looks kind of weird um since he is a butler his normal attire isn't too far off but i actually like his normal attire better we'll put her back in her normal attire um mila we'll put her back in hers elise back in her oh i'm not showing you the hairstyles that's elise's hairstyle i guess since i'm not saving the game it doesn't matter um mila's hairstyle which actually looks kind of cool kind of like uh, Chun-Li sort of thing going on. 
um, Jude's hairstyle, which makes him look like Levy from Attack on Titan, and Alvin's butler hairstyle. Or steward hairstyle. My bad. Yeah, stewards. That's what they are. And that's basically... Mm, that's the extent of the cosmetic attachments. The drippy nose is kind of funny. It just kind of... It has physics to it, so it just kind of moves and wiggles. It's interesting, but... I don't know. I don't like it. Um, oh, yeah. I also have the aviator sunglasses on him and uh, Rowan. Because those look cool. And there's a bunch of different things you can get. Let's keep going. I'm not going to be young forever. I can't afford to waste it standing around like this. Yeah, if you sit there for a while, I actually talk. And the next thing I want to get to before I go into the boss battle and show you what those are like are these things right here. If you look in the bottom left corner, you'll see it says select for etc. The power of tea time. What these are are. I don't want to know what that is over there, Andrew. These are little miscellaneous skits or sometimes they're talking about the main plot or a subplot that if you're doing a subquest or just this one's just a miscellaneous one we'll listen to it real quick stay on guard the enemy could be all around us yes ma'am how about we take a break but anyone care for tea this is hardly the time for tea whatever do you mean here i've steeped some of my finest blend hmm. well a moment's rest then but stay vigilant. This is good! It tastes like sunshine! It's wonderful. Not just the flavor, but the aroma, too. It's my own special mix. The aroma comes from dried fruit peels. That's peculiar. After just one cup, I feel completely energized. I'm better than ever! Such is the magic of good tea and idle conversation. And they're little things like that, which I'm actually going to show you because I can. I keep hitting the wrong button. That you have a library of any skit you have viewed ever. You can just go back and listen to them. Which I am going, ironically, and or I don't know if it's ironic or not, but funny enough, the my two favorite ones here are at the top of the page for whatever reason. So. These are just, this one is one of the main reasons I fell in love with Alvin, and it's this one right here. What a beautiful view. I bet if I yelled really loud, it would echo back. So why not try it? You gotta do things like that while you're still young. When you get to be my age, it can get a little embarrassing. Yeah, all right, why not? Echo! Echo, 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 echo. Alvin? Alvin, 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 Alvin. And what you're doing now isn't embarrassing? A little, a little, a little, a little. <laughs> it's just things like that. Like, I just love Alvin as a character. And like I said earlier, the voice acting is just perfect in this game. And then there's this other one right here. Look out, guys. There are little bugs everywhere. I wonder if Mila gets bitten a lot in that outfit. You didn't know? She swats the bugs away with her hair. Wow, like the tail of a cow! Don't compare my crowning glory to the tail of a cow. Crowning glory? I didn't expect such vanity from the Lord of Spirits. Sylph styled my hair for me. He said, you're in human form, so you need to take care of your appearance. You had the great spirit of wind style your hair? That's incredible! Yes, I'm quite fond of it. If I swing it around quickly, I can distract a foe between attacks. So you do swish it like a cow. <laughs> it's just things like that, like little in-between things that are not necessary at all, and you could just not press the select button and not listen to any of them, but I honestly, I really think they're all worth a listen to. Just because they add more character, and they're just fun to listen to, and I don't know, I just love it. It's a, apparently a lot of the Tales games do that, I think it's like a thing that most of the Tales games do, and it's like the little in-between conversation things, and it makes me just want to go back and just listen to all the different dialogue. Now, I don't know if there's a way to view cutscenes or not, but this is, this is a main intro theme, but we're not going to watch that because I don't know if the music's copyrighted or not. 
But we're gonna load back into this save right here, which I made specifically right before one of the big boss fights. And this boss fight isn't particularly too difficult. Right now I think I was, yeah, I was still using everyone's maid outfit at this point. So, these are just, just to kind of give you an idea of what the boss fights are like. And in this one, I, I only had, yeah, I didn't have Jude in this battle, but we didn't have Leia at the time. And, well, I was about to say something. Oh, the next boss battle after this, you only had Leia and Jude for the first round of the boss battle, and then Mila came in. So, they, they're not necessarily easy. Luckily, this one, I had everyone I had been practicing with. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Do not neglect Jude. <laughs> Make sure you play as him, because there will be times where you need to play as him. I'm not going to tell you why, and yes, even though you're following Mila's story, there are there are times you need to play as Jude, and I had not been doing that, and I had to go and actually practice as Jude for like a good 30 or 45 minutes, because I'd never actually played as him, and I was just had this one boss kicking my butt. The core is active now, but... What can we do up here? Grow wings? Good thinking. I shall cast a channeling circle on the erupting spirit energy. We may be able to ride it down safely, but only if we can maintain control. So are we gonna dive in? Should've kept my mouth shut. We're only gonna get one chance to hit the core. This is what I was talking about of the... What are we waiting for? ...things have you have them wear citizens. go into battle right. with them. There's no other way. And this is where the team of bunny Your maids is inspiring. <laughs> go into battle. Young lady, will you wait here, please? I'm gonna skip this. It's nothing too important. It's just they ride down on a little glider thing, blow up a core, and then... Oh, just kidding. This is that part right here. Boom! Okay, we'll skip that. They just land, they take a look around, and then boom! Giant moth appears. Who am I playing as? Mima? Okay. Was their main objective creating this thing? Something's not right. Ow. I think I know. You can analyze it after the battle. So this one's like kinda high up, and you have to like jump up and then knock it down. And then who am I linked with? Elise? Okay. Over here! There we go. That heals you and attacks enemies at the same time. But as you see, if you look at the, I'm gonna turn the game music down for just a second. If you look at the little yellow triangle, it might be hard to see. I'll go in a little closer. That is their health bar. So all this attacking we're doing is not waving down on their health very much at all right now. And it's, they're not easy. Like, this is probably the easiest boss that I've fought. And it's not particularly easy. As you see, like, I'm actually losing a lot of health right now. And actually about to die. Alright, time to play as Elise. And then, oh gosh. What is, let's do an art. Um, um, what is Pixie Circle? Oh, just, okay. Oh, I don't have any... Power. Can't do that. Well, I failed that battle. That kind of just goes to show that the battles are not easy. So we're just going to go, I guess, back over to here for now. But yeah, like, the game's not necessarily an easy game. You have to think about everything you do, and I really like that. And I do like the fact that as you're playing the game and you go through different boss battles, your characters will split up and you'll have to fight with... Like, like I said, it was throwing me Jude and Leia, and at some points just Jude, and I'd never fought with Jude before, so it made me actually play as him and learn him, and it keeps you diverse with 
most RPGs just give you a list of characters and say, alright, pick and choose how you want to play, do whatever, go use them as you will. But this one actually challenges you, and it's like, okay, here, you're going to use Rowan and Mila, or you're going to use Jude and just Jude, or Jude and Leia, and, oh, Alvin's out of the party, so now it's just Mila and Jude again, like, early on in the game. So, it, it switches things up, and it keeps things interesting, rather than just, okay, here's, you know, my party of four people, we're going to go kill everything like we always do. It's really interesting how it's set up, and I really do like that. And a lot of people might not like that system. I think it does it a lot of good. And I already collected that before. Oh, that's right. It didn't save. But I guess that's about everything to talk about in this game. Well, I haven't really talked about the story itself very much, I guess. But I'm not one that's good at explaining stories at all. But basically, Mila... Uh, how did I do that again? Here? There we go. Mila is supposed to be the protector of the world, as she is the Great Spirit Maxwell. And the humans that are the corrupt government of Rashigal are using a very high-tech weapon that allows people to channel mana more than they would ever humanly be possible to do. And trying to create a giant weapon using that, and Mila is trying to stop them from doing that, and that is the overall overhanging pressure on everyone is to try and get strong enough to stop the Rashigal army, which is also, I think I explained earlier, why they're wanted, and that is the core of the story and what everything kind of revolves around. But as you meet new characters, as you go to different town, there are different subplots that emit from that. And it's really interesting. And I've never really had a moment in this game where it felt very dull or I didn't feel like playing again. Or I was just like, oh, let's hurry up and get this part over with. Like, even when I was dying over and over and over on this one particular boss when I was just playing as Jude, like, it was interesting because I was like, oh, okay. I gotta actually play as Jude, so I should back out of this battle, go to a little bit earlier, and actually fight as him, and get used to him, and it was fun, because it was challenging. It wasn't just, how, what level are you at? It was actually, I had to learn Jude's playstyle. It was not just go and grind with him for a while. Like, most RPGs would be like, oh, you're not high enough level. Go grind five more levels, and then come back and try. This one's actually, like like I said, they have different attacks, they play different ways, and it's challenging, and I love that. I just, I really love this game, and I think it deserves a lot more, I think the Tales series deserves a lot more popularity than what it has, and that doesn't mean that people don't love the Tales games once they've played them, and, you know, I will probably go and buy Tales of Zillia 2 eventually, yeah, Sanjo eventually, Tales of Hysteria, and I have Tales of Symphonia, and it's an older Tales game, it's, it's okay, it's not the greatest, but it's okay, but I really love this series, and I love what this game in particular has done, and it is probably one of my favorite RPGs that I've played in a very long time, like, even bigger games like Dragon Age, Fallout, Skyrim, there's times where it feels like it's not really losing my interest, but it's just kind of like, oh, okay, until I find something new, and then, oh, this is fun, or I get really powerful, or I get a new weapon, I'm like, oh, this is fun to do. You know, Dragon Age, that series is, has always had a hard time constantly keeping my attention. Like, I love playing the game, and I'll play it in bursts, but it's not one I could sit down and play for 12 hours. Like, when I play this game, I play it 3 and 4 hours at a time. I don't just stop playing it. Like, it's just fun. It's just fun to go and sit down and play for a really long time. And I think it deserves a lot more credit than what it has. And I can only speak for Zillia 1 as it's the only game I've had. Zestiria seems to be very highly recommended by a lot of people and highly reviewed. And, let's see, there was Zillia 2, Zestiria, I think there was another one thrown in there somewhere. I'm not entirely sure, but, 
Zesperia? It was, I think it was Xbox. It was on my Xbox. I think it may be on PS3 too now. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm playing this on the PS3. The, uh, the Zillia games came out like PS3, 360, and I think they're on PC? Uh, no. At least they're on Steam. The only one on Steam right now is Symphonia and Zesperia. Oh, well, either way. If you have 360 or PS3 or you have a way to play Tales of Zillia, definitely go and check it out. Like I like I said, I got it at GameStop for like 20 bucks, maybe 25. It wasn't all that expensive and I have more than got my money's worth for this. Like if I would have known how great the Tales series was going into it, between this and Symphonia, I think I paid about $40. I would definitely have paid $60 to get Zestiria if I would have known I would like Tales games this much. So it is definitely worth like the 20 or 25 that you can find this game for, and I highly recommend playing it, even if you don't like other, like, most JRPGs or... No, honestly, even, even if it's on PSN, or if it's on PSN, like, say, buy it full price. Like that. Yeah, like, if it's on PSN, I think actually on PSN it's, like, $40? I mean... I mean, like, it's still definitely worth it, but I mean, I would obviously say, like, you know, you can find it used in a physical copy cheap because it is an older game. So, obviously, I'm going to recommend doing that because it's, you know, a lot more cheap. It's a lot cheaper, but definitely buy the game however you can and play it. Even if you're not a huge fan of RPGs, this game, just with its character development, the story, the gameplay of it it's different than anything I've played before and I really love it and whether you love it or you don't love it definitely at least give it a try because I didn't know how I was going to be going into this game but I love it so full recommendation play this game play the crap out of it mm, I love it you love it too go love this game um and honestly, like I said, like I paid probably $18 for the different outfits or whatever. I don't regret a single second of it. That's just my personal opinion. A lot of people would probably be like, I'm not paying money for extra outfits, but I love the maid outfits. It's just Wait, funny. Lord. It's just, it's funny. Like, it's just, it's fun. Like, I have like, you're I have a horde of gonna, bunny maids going into dead. battle, taking on a government. Like, just the thought of that is just hilarious. <laughs> it's just it's hilarious and I love it anyway that's all for this video thank you for watching make sure you click like click that like button make sure you comment tell me if you've played the game what you think about it or if you feel like there's another game similar to this that I might like you know obviously not another Tales game because I'm eventually going to play all of those but any other games similar to this one you know, tell me your experiences with this game if you have played it, or other Tales games. Anyway, oh, and make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I have a new series I'm going to slowly start working on eventually. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that or how I'm going to do that. Um, that doesn't mean the quick scopes are going to stop. I'm going to still do a few more of these before that video's even really... The, before that video is even really ready to be released, uh, there's still going to be a few more of these. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and I will see you later.